In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install and use PostgreSQL database in a clean architecture that uses ASP.NET 8. So, previously I uh, released some different tutorials and I created this uh, clean architecture in another video and also I installed Microsoft SQL Server in another video. You can find the link of all that videos in the video description. It has a playlist for it. But let's have a quick review on the uh, Microsoft SQL Server installation because the procedures are the same and we can, uh, created some uh, steps in that tutorial. So, let's have a quick review and then continue. The first step was to creating an entity for using in our database. So we created a public class of a student with just ID, name, and email. This was the first step. And then uh, after that, inside of the infrastructure, we installed some package. If I go to the package here, you can see that I installed Microsoft at a different worker.sql server and Microsoft at a different worker.tools. We need these tools again, but we installed another package for the PostgreSQL instead of this SQL server. This is it. And also in the API layer, we installed another package, which is Microsoft and the core that design. This is in required. So this was the for the package. And then we created our context. So you see that inside of the infrastructure layer in the persistence, we created Microsoft SQL Server. In that, we created app MS SQL Server DB context. And inside of that, we created this DB set of students. Then we override some of the things for this uh, student to show you how you can do this. So this was the next step. And the next thing is to configure it to inject to our uh, uh, services. So here you can see that inside dependency injection of this clean architecture. If you don't know what is this, you need to see the clean architecture creation video in the playlist. Uh, I explained everything there. So inside of this, we receive the services. And also we receive our configuration of configurations from the main API project. And then here we say services that add DB context and we add our DB context, which is app MS SQL DB context. And then we receive its connection string, which is coming from these options. And we use options that use SQL server with this connection string. This is, this is the final thing that we need. And if you're asking where this is coming local MS SQL, let me show you in the uh, API project, in the presentation API, in the app setting, we created a connection string key. Inside of that, we created this local MS SQL with the connection string that we need to connect to our database. So this is it. This was all of the things that we need. And then we went and we created a controller. In the test TV controller, we injected our uh, Microsoft SQL Server DB context and then we received the list of the students from it and we tested that. So this was a quick review of what we have done for the Microsoft SQL Server. Let's go and install everything for our PostgreSQL database. Of course, the first step is to create an entity, but we already have this entity. So you can see that I have the student with ID, name, and email. So in this example, I exactly use this student so you can see that it is easy and you can compare it with SQL Server. Let's go and do this. So the first thing is creating this entity and after this we need to create our context. So let's go and let's minimize this and go to infrastructure layer and in the persistence you see that we created Microsoft SQL Server. So I will add a new folder here named PostgreSQL and inside of that I want to create a new context. But because a lot of it are uh, like the previous example we can copy a lot of things from that. Let me first copy its name from here and then in the PostgreSQL, let's add a new class and paste it. So this time I say it is app PostgreSQL DB context to have a difference between them. So let's add it and let's make this public and also let's delete all of this. We don't need these. So this is it. And here we need to inherit from DB context again. So this DB context has nothing to the PostgreSQL because it is coming from Microsoft. Entity framework core. This is it. And after that, we press control dot and we generate a constructor with these options. And here it must be generic. So I pass this uh, app PostgreDB context to it. And then we say you need to send this with this space of options to your parent, which is DB context. This is it. And after that, we need to create another uh, thing, which is a DB set. So let's copy that because it's the same the Microsoft SQL Server. Let's copy. And explain it. So here in the uh, DB context of our PostgreSQL, we say we, have, we need to have a 
public DB set with type of a student with name of a student. So this would be a representation for our student's table in database. And also we can overwrite, let's copy this because it's exactly like this to show you. You can ignore this or you can use this, but also here you can use this R model creating and you can overwrite, for example, the name of this student or the, uh, the primary key of it. So I say I want this to be my student's table. This is it, and I want to have a key of ID for it. So this is it. This was the next thing which was configuring our uh, PostgreSQL context. The next thing is to uh, use it in the services and inject it. So in order to do it, we need to have, have another package. So let's go to the dependencies. And no, not add project, add NuGet package, manage. Okay, and here we need to use PostgreSQL. So let's search for PostgreSQL to see what we have. This is it, npg SQL, entity framework core dot PostgreSQL. I want to install this package in my project. Let's install it. And that's it. That's all I need. So let's close it. And now let's go to the dependency injection. And here uh, we uh, created a configuration for the Microsoft SQL Server previously. The process is exactly the same. So I simply copy paste this and this is the uh, quicker, by the way, always try to use uh, copy paste as much as you can. It helps you to do your tasks faster. So I say this is a PostgreSQL database. So I say services dot add db context, but this time I want to use app PostgreSQL. So you see that I'm using another db context in my project. That's it. And this is, I think this is a good example. So you can see that even you can use multiple contexts with multiple databases in your project. So after this, I say we need to add the context of app postgre and on the options, where our connection string is com uh, configuration that get connection string, but this time we need to use another connection string. So I say local postgre SQL. This is the name of the connection string. And then we say options dot. This time we need to use another thing, which is NPG SQL. So postgre SQL is it. So we need to use this options that use NPG SQL with this connection string, and then we can use it. So this is the uh, final thing. The, the another thing is we need to have this connection string. So let's copy this name and create a connection string for it. I go to the uh, API layer in the app setting, and here you can see that I have this connection string with local MS SQL. And in the end of that, I add a comma, enter. And I want to create a new key and value. So the name of it would be local PostgreSQL, and let me copy the value of it here. You need to say what is your host, what is your database name, your username, and your password. So for the host, I use local host because I want to use a local database for it. You will see that later. For a database name, I can use clean arch test Postgre. And for the username and the password, you need to use the username and the password for your project. I add this after closing this app setting. But you need to create a new instance of the Postgre in your system and use your username and password here. So this is it. this is the local Postgre SQL, and uh, you can use this. And as you can see, we receive that here, and we can use it. So the next thing is we need to have a migration for it. So how we can do these migrations? Let's close everything and work on it. So the thing is in the infrastructure we added our context so we need to keep our migrations here you can see that i have this folder of migration which is for my previous tutorial of this db context but i want to show you how this will works because now we have multiple contexts we may face some error so let me delete this migration to show you everything from scratch so i delete this migration folder i don't want it anymore and you need to open a package manager console from here other windows you can see that i have this package manager console and it is here. So because uh, we need to use uh, it in the infrastructure, you need to be sure that here on the default project, you are using the infrastructure. And also you need to be sure that your representation API is your startup project. So let's right click on it and set as a startup project. Let's go back to package manager console again. And let's add a migration to see if it works or we receive error. So I say add migration of init of, let's say postgre. Let's see if it work or not. It will not work, but I will show you why. Let's see its error. It helps us in the future. And this is the error that I was talking about. So it says more than one db context was found. Specify which one to use. Use the dash context parameter. 
So, or uh, uh, for the PowerShell commands and the dash dash context parameter for .NET commands. So this is it because we have multiple contexts. Entity Framework doesn't know which one is the context that it needs to create a migration for it. We need to use dash context for it. So let's go and copy the name of our PostgreSQL uh, context, which is this, and let's open the package manager console again. And again, let's use add migration. But before this, let's use add. Uh, or you know after this or before that we can do both so I use dash context and I paste the name of app postgresql db context this is it let's add it and see if it works or not well you see that it uh, works and it created a new migration for us and if you go to the let me close this and go to migrations so you can see that we have this migration of app postgresql db context model snapshot and this creation and also let me sh uh, let me show you that how we can do this for another form so we have another context here so you see if i go here and copy the name of it also i, I can create it with this context so i can use again the same uh, command i say add migration of init of instead of post here i say mssql with dash context of app mssql db context the other context let's test it you can see that we have multiple contexts and we can say which context you need to use. So you see that it created another context for our Microsoft SQL and also in the migrations we have another folder with app MSSQL DB and we have uh, another migration for our Microsoft SQL Server. That's so good. Let's continue. So we created our context. The next thing is we need to use the updating uh, command to update it and send it to our database. Let's copy the let me close this migration. Let me copy the name of our context again, the postgres context, because we need it. And this time, I can say, I want to use update database command. And I again, if I don't use any flag, you see that we have error. It says for which context you want. So we say update database dash context and paste the name of app postgres db context. Let's press enter and wait for it. Okay, you see that it says password authentication failed for user of uh, this uh, question mark. So let me add my uh, username and password to the app context and then continue. I added my username and my password in the connection string. So let's use update database dash context app postgresql db context again. And yes, you see that the migration is working and it is done. Now let's test our database. So. Uh, in order to use PostgreSQL, you need to install a PG admin software on your system. Let me open it. Well, this is the PG admin for software. So you can see that I have this PostgreSQL 15 instance in my system and in my databases, I have clean arch test PostgreSQL. So let's open it and see. So inside of it, we have schemas and in its schemas, we have tables. And in tables, you can see that we have EF migration history and my students table. So Let's right click and uh, go here to view all roles. So this is, you can see that in my database, I have this uh, my students table table and I have ID, name, email. So it is created automatically and it is working. That's good. No, just let's add some data to it here and then test it in our controller. So I right click here and I go to scripts and in the create a script. So. Uh, no, not create. I need to insert. So a script of insert is better for me. Yes. So let me add some data to it. So I don't want to pass it ID. It is auto increment. So I added three values, Mamad, John, and Ali. And you can see that they are here. So if I right click here and I say view all rows again, well, I have three rows in this table. That's good. It is okay because we, ju we just want to test it. Let's go back to our .NET project. And here first, let's close everything. So close all tabs. And then let's go to our uh, presentation API layer. And in the controller, let's test it. So previously, I created this in uh, Microsoft SQL Server database tutorial. I created another example. So I created this get students and I get the, the list of that from the database. So let's create another one. The first thing is let's uh, rename this previous one because we need to have another context here. And also let's delete this. So 
I want to have two uh, contexts. So private read only of app post gear and the name of it. So I have two different instances of uh, context. We can receive them. So generate a constructor for the app Microsoft SQL Server. This is it. Now let's move this to the top. And we added the Microsoft SQL Server to the constructor. And also let's press Ctrl that here and add a parameter to our uh, constructor. So we have both of them in the constructor. That's good. And also here we have another get. So the, let's change it. So get students from uh, MS SQL Server. And also here let's add a road for it. Get from Microsoft SQL Server. So this is it, and also let's change this context. No, it is this name. So uh, I think yeah, yeah. So we have this HTTP get from Microsoft SQL Server. Let's copy this and paste it again. And this time for the second one, we say get from PostgreSQL or this PostgreSQL. This is it, and for the name of it, we say public ASIC task of action result of get students from PostgreSQL name and here in the result we say instead of Microsoft SQL DB context we say uh, use the PostgreSQL DB context that students start to list you see that the uh, commands are the same because we are using EF core for both of them and then return a result so let's save and start the project to see the result well this is the output of our project let's minimize this and this we don't need this okay so in the test DB controller we have get from PostgreSQL let's try it and this is, you can see that we are receiving the list of the users that we created with name of Mamad, John, and Ali from our PostgreSQL database. And it is working. So this was a tutorial for using the PostgreSQL in Kiln architecture, which uses ASP.NET uh, version 8. I hope this video helps you. Let me know your opinions in the comments. Have a good time and goodbye.